There we go. I got it. Okay. You are um, uh, for the live uh, studio audience. We have uh, the voting session of the Environment and Transportation Committee. Uh, we have uh, a number of bills. So I will begin with um, the first bill on the list. House Bill 10, Delegate Corman's bill. Uh, is that, Dave, is that your uh, bill? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair, it is. Okay. House, House Bill 10 received a favorable vote in subcommittee. There were no subcommittee amendments. And HB 10 requires the Maryland Transit Authority to provide safety and workforce development training, um, including an apprenticeship program um, to help transition the, the uh, bus fleet to zero emission vehicle buses. Okay, is there a motion? So moved. Second. 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 So just to um, uh, remind everybody that this is jointly assigned with, assigned with appropriations. If they feel they don't have the money for this, they won't pass it. So um, that explains the fiscal notes uh, ramifications in this instance. So any discussion or debate on uh, House Bill 10? I don't see any hands raised. So we'll proceed to a roll call vote. Uh, which we're going to do as a roll call because we want to know who all is here. So, uh, Trish, roll it from the top. Vice Chair Stein? Yes. Holmes? Aye. Learman? Yes. Frazier Hidalgo? Yes. Otto? Uh, you need to unmute yourself, uh, Charles. I'm sorry. I thought I had been. Uh, I'll vote no on this because of our rural areas and the distance that they have to travel and opportunities to charge. But that's my principle for now. Not that I'm not against the goal. Okay. <laughs> Jacobs? Yes. Weibel? No. Okay. Delegate Ampre? Yes. Silberti? No. Wells? She absent? I think so. Somebody text her. Maybe she's planning on coming on at three. Good thinking. Delegate Love? Yes. Ruth? Yes. Pretty Man? Yes. Foley? Yes. Stewart? Yes. Layman? I vote aye. Teresa? Yes. Parrot? No. Boyce? Yes. Clark? Yes. Jaleesi? Jay? Somebody text Jay also. Anderton? And Cornbread, somebody text him. No, he's here. Oh, he's here. here. Oh. I'm here. Uh, yes. Best. Delegate Gilchrist? Yes. Healy? Aye. And the chairman votes yes. And Trish, could you give us what the vote tally is? Uh, it's 19 to four with two absent. Okay. The bill, pa uh, the bill ca uh, par uh, passes our committee and will go straight to appropriations. House Bill 16. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Would we be able to pile onto that one? Sure. How many people want to pile on? Hello. I'll tell you what. Let's do this. <laughs> put, your no, hand up, put your hand up in uh, the computer because that way you'll all be in a row and it'll be easy to see you. So if you want to be a, a co-sponsor of that bill, uh, just put your hand up. What the hell? I'll do the same thing. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go down this list slowly. Uh, I'd like to be on the bill if I'm not already. Brooke Learman, Marlon Ampre. Had no kind of discussion like that, Mike. <laughs> Marlon Ampre, 
Jen Terraza, Linda Foley, Sarah Love, DFH, the vice chair, Marvin Holmes, Vaughn Stewart, Ann Healy, Sheila Ruth, Regina Boyce, Del Roxanne Prettyman, Mary Lehman. Would someone like to uh, read that back? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, yeah. <clears throat> I have um, Frazier, Doggo, Learman, Ampre, Terraza, Foley, Love, Stein, Holmes, Stewart, Healy, Ruth, Boyce, Prettyman, and Lehman. Is that everybody? Okay. Let's go to House Bill 16. Mr. Chairman. Yes. House Bill 16 prohibits a person from leaving a dog outside and unattended for longer than 30 minutes. If the temperature is below 32 or above 90 degrees, the subcommittee uh, voted favorably with no amendments, Mr. Chairman. This is very similar to a bill we did last year. And the year second. before, I think. Yes. Okay, is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the bill? Okay, we're, let's do a roll call again because I wanna see if anybody has shown up. Um, roll it. Also, Hi. Delegate Wells is um, not feeling well. Okay, excuse me. Mr. Stein? Yes. Holmes? Aye. Learman? Yes. Fraser Hidalgo? Dave? You're muted. Aye. Otto. No. Jacobs. Yes. Weibel. No. Ampre. Yes. Silberti. No. Wells is excused. Love. Yes. Ruth. Yes. Pretty man. Yes. Foley. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Layman. Yes. Trossa. Yes. Parrot. No. Voice. Yes. Clark. Yes. Is that a yes? Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. Jaleesi. Anderton. Yes. Gilcrest. Yes. Keeley. Yes. And the chairman votes yes. Okay, 19 to four. Okay, I'm, hold on. Um, okay. Is, do people want to pile on amendment for this? Yes. Okay, raise your hand in the, in Zoom. <sighs> All righty then. So I'm going to go down. The, is everybody? Does everybody have their hand up who wants to be on the bill? Okay, I'm going to go read down the list slowly. The chairman, if I'm not already on it, Linda Foley, Jen Terraza, Sarah Love, Vaughn Stewart, the vice chairman, Dana Stein, uh, Brooke Learman, DFH, Ann Healy, Roxanne Prettyman. That's all I have. Read that back, please. I have Barbe, Foley, Terrassa, Love, Stewart, Stein, Learman, DFH, Healy, and Prettyman. Okay. All right. There we go. Uh, House Bill 53, Dave. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 53 was voted favorably out of subcommittee with no amendments. House Bill 53 is in the same posture 
That is House Bill 284 passed in the House in 2021. Um, it authorizes Baltimore City to use enforcement purposes of a bustling monitoring system to record images of the motor vehicle unless unlawfully traveling in the dedicated bus lane. Move the bill. All right. Um, is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the bill? Who's this chatting with me? Oh, uh, okay. Um, all right. We'll do this by voice vote. I mean, is is uh, I guess we have missing... Wells, who's excused absent because she's sick, and Jaleesi, who's just absent. Anybody else? Okay, voice vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those, those opposed? Opposed. No. Can I explain my vote? No. Uh, you know what? Roll, do a roll call. It'll be easier to do it that way. Vice Chair Stein? Yes. Holmes? Aye. Learman? Yes. Fraser Hidalgo? Yes. Otto? No, but I is, I'm understanding this is a camera enforcement or something. Is that what the monitoring part of it does? I'm not, I don't like, uh, but that's my answer. Good. Okay. Jacobs? Yes. Weibel? No, and to explain my vote, I agree with Delgado Otto. I'm not a fan of increasing camera enforcement in the state. I do understand the issue, and I'm not a fan of the fines of up to five hundred dollars. That's Ampre. That's not yes. Silberti. In the interest of time, without explaining why, no. <laughs> then just, just say no. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't, but you couldn't resist bragging about how you were saving us time, though. Could, could you? No, how much time is gone? <laughs> okay, oh keep my. going down the list. <laughs> Wells excused. Love. Yes. Ruth. Yes. Pretty man. Yes. Foley. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Layman. Yes. Teresa. Yes. Parent. No. Boyce? Yes. Clark? Yes. Jaleesi? Yes. Anderton? Yep. Gilcrest? Yes. Healy? Yes. And chairman? Chairman votes yes. What's the chair? margin? 19 to 4. Okay. Uh, would anybody like to be a co sponsor? Just put your hand up in the in the Zoom, and I'll read you off. Regina Boyce would like to be a co-sponsor, and Brooke Learman, and Marlon Amprey, and Roxanne Prettyman. It's like it's a local bill. <laughs> Gee, it almost seems that way, doesn't it? Okay, that's it then. Let's move on. House Bill 77, Delegate Fraser Dalgo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. House Bill 77 was voted unfavorable out of the subcommittee. And if I may explain. Yeah, sure. So um, thank you. We did talk a little bit about this, Mr. Chair, and I have spoken with some of the um, some of the people on the some of the folks in the subcommittee, including Delegate Boyce, as well as uh, the Baltimore Organization 365 that has been working on this issue for years in Baltimore. So the idea at this point, after talking with um, the bill sponsor is to basically turn this into kind of a summer study or work group summer, maybe maybe more like a fall, a fall work group um, to try and figure out the best way to deal with this issue. This is an extraordinarily complicated issue, one that Baltimore City has been wrestling with for decades. And um, I think there are just some very, very unique hurdles that have to be um have to be understood before we proceed because um it's just it's very very complicated so everybody seemed to be on board with it uh and that's that's kind of where we are with it so uh dave you explained to delegate cham that she could opt to withdraw the bill if she wanted to and she chose to just have us move unfavorable correct that is absolutely correct i i proposed the idea one way or the other whatever her pleasure was and after thinking about it a little bit she talked to myself and delegate voice for a little bit and, and she decided to just asked us if we would just vote the bill down. And I said, if that's your pleasure. Okay, motion's unfavorable. Uh, is there a second? Second. Okay, 
Any, any further discussion on this unfavorable motion? Seeing none, we'll do a voice vote. All those in favor of the unfavorable motion signify by saying aye. 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 And anyone opposed to the unfavorable motion? Okay, the motion, the bill fails with, on, on a uh, unanimous vote. Uh, House Bill 91. Delegate Thank you, Mr. Vote. Chair. House Bill 91 received a favorable report from the subcommittee without any amendments. And the bill requires online registration of ground rents currently maintained by the State Department of Assessment Taxation to include data concerning irredeemable ground rents. Uh, additionally, the bill expands requirements to preserve irredeemable ground rents by requiring the holder of the irredeemable ground rent to file with SDEP and renew the notice of intention to preserve the irredeemably and subsequent renewal notices under certain uh, schedule. And you'll notice, Mr. Chair, I emphasize the word irredeemable because there are two types of ground rents, irredeemable and redeemable. This bill is specifically for irredeemable. Uh, move the bill, Mr. Chair, there are no amendments. You know, this reminds me of the line in the movie Private Benjamin where the sergeant said, beware of the uh, inert, uh, uh, beware of the uh, Inert, but there are two types of landmines, inert and ert. <laughs> Is there a second? Second. <laughs> okay. Uh, boy, the things that I think of. Uh, Vice Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Delgate Holmes, I'm a little bit fuzzy as to the year. All I can do is uh, appro I can only approximate it. I cannot be very specific. However, the summer of 1634. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right. We're going to vote now. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone, vo any aye. Vo anyone voting no? Okay, and Jay Jalisi is still uh, absent and uh, uh, Melissa's still sick. So, okay. Um, so that's 20, 23 to uh, zero with two, abs uh, two missing, right? Trish? Correct. Okay. Um, I don't see anybody asking to co-sponsor, so we'll just move on. Um, uh, House Bill 131. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The subcommittee recommendation is favorable with amendments. This bill establishes tracking and reporting of requirements for producers and owners of synthetic turf and turf infill that is sold, distributed, and installed in the state. The, uh, the bill establishes that for any turf installed as of the start of 2023, the owner reports for any turf installed after the start of 2023, the producer reports until the warranty ends at which point then the owner reports. Uh, amendment number one is technical. Amendment number two alters the definition of turf infill, infill and requires the owner of the turf to report the chain of custody information if the turf was under a warranty and the warranty expired. Move the amendments, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second for the amendments? Second. Any discussion on the amendments to the bill? All right. Oh, I, I, have quick, I have a quick question. I'm sorry. I think I missed the vote on this day, but if I'm not mistaken, but just to understand the chain of custody now is starting with what, with whom exactly? Um, well, if, I with the if we're talking about a turf field that's been installed as of January 1, 2023, the owner reports and continues right. to report. For any turf that's installed after then, the producer reports until the warranty ends, at which point then the owner is required to report. And it's just, a, okay. And the, so the producer reports, what exactly? Remind me. I'm, I'm... Yeah, the chain of custody information that then M MDE must publish yeah. on its website, basically saying this is a turf field that was installed, you know, by so-and-so on this state at this location. And um, yeah, so then... And, and um, once the warranty ends, then the owner is required to uh, to report any any changes in the chain of custody. Got it. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion or questions about the amendment to the bill? 
Seeing none, we'll vote on the amendment. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The amendment carries. The bills before us is amended. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chair. Second. Any discussion or debate on the bill as amended? Okay, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Opposed. Okay, I, I, what I have as opposed is um, all the Republicans accept cornbread. Is that right? Yes. So all the Republicans except for cornbread are voting no. And uh, Trish, tell me what, when you're done with that, tell us what the margin, what the... I have 17 to six. Okay. All right. Um, yes. Can we pile onto this one? Oh, of course. Um, if you want to be a co-sponsor of this bill, put your hand up in the Zoom and... Uh, Okay, I'm gonna start reading off the names. Linda Foley, Brooke Learman, Jen Terraza, Vaughn Stewart, Regina Boyce, David Frazier Hidalgo, Sarah Love, Sheila Ruth. When you're ready, please read that back. I have Foley, Learman, Tarasa, Stewart, Boyce, D-A-F-H, Love, and Ruth. Sounds good to me. Okay. Uh, House Bill 156. And that you? No, it's me. Hold on one second. I'll pull oh. it up. Thank you. Um, so uh, HB 156 deals with, uh, as amended, this bill authorizes local governments <laughs> to establish urban agricultural incentive zones. Um, it also authorizes local governments to provide some incentives um, if they want in those urban agriculture to urban agricultural activities. So this is um, enabling legislation for local governments. Um, the bill, the subcommittee moved the bill amended. Um, amendment number one makes technical changes, and amendment number two strikes the language in the bill that would have required sales and use tax revenue generated in that zone to stay with that local government. So there is no more sales and use tax. Um, uh, revenue in this bill. Um, uh, move the amendments or move the bill as amended. Uh, well, uh, the is there a second on the amendments? I'll move the amendments. Second, second. amendments. Okay. Um, uh, any discussion on the amendments? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes seem to have it. The ayes have it. The bills before us is amended. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the bill as amended? Dave, do you have your hand up from the pylon amendment or what's going on? Okay. Um, there appears to be no discussion. Oh, uh, Delegate Parrott. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My question was, uh, which I saw in the fiscal notes, several counties were mentioned. Are those the counties that want, will be able to use this that are asking for it? Um, so some counties are asking for it, but any county would I believe that almost any county would be able to. Um, so it's not, Kristen can correct me if I'm wrong, it's not specific because um, it's just enabling legislation. So okay. if they wanted to, they could apply. They could, you know, pass a local law to implement this. Very good, thank you. Okay, any further discussion or questions? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Neil? I'm aye. Okay. All right. Aye, aye, aye. <laughs> Build the <laughs> clock here. Okay. All right. Great. Um, uh, the, uh, the bill carries unanimously. I take it that Jay is still not with us, right? Correct. Okay. So um, I don't hear anybody wanting to pile on. So we'll just move on instead of piling on. Oh, Regina. Okay. If you want to pile on, put your hand up in the Zoom, please. Okay, Sheila Ruth, Linda Foley, Roxanne Prettyman, Regina Boyce, mm -hmm. Ann Healy, DFH, Mary Lehman. Anyone else? Please read that back when you have a when you have a chance. 
Y'all gets Ruth Foley, Pretty Men Voice, Healy, D A F S. Oh my gosh, D F H, and Delegate Layman. Um. Okay. Uh. There we go. And look. Uh, I guess this is the danger of Jay said he wasn't expecting the. Hold on. Hold on a second. Okay, um, that's it. And all right, so let's go on to the next bill, which is 191. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senate ha <clears throat> House Bill 191 extends the termination date for the Spain Muter Fund within the Department of Agriculture uh, to 2032. It extends it for 10 years. Uh, the subcommittee amended the reporting requirement. Department of Agriculture is to report by October of this year on uh, proposed uh, fee structure. The subcommittee added a, additional possible revenue sources and the amendment makes it identical to Senate Bill 206 as passed by the Senate this year. Move the amendment, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Second. Any uh, uh, discussion or questions about the amendments? Hearing none, we'll vote on the amendment. Uh, is it's two amendments? Oh, one amendment, Mr. Chairman. Oh, one amendment. Okay, pardon me. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The amendment uh, carries. The bills before us is amended. Is there a second? Second. second. Okay. Discussion or debate on the bill as amended. Hearing none, we'll proceed to a vote. Uh, all those in favor of House Bill 191 signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, uh, Delegate Parrott is opposed. Mm -hmm. Delegate Jalisi is with us in voting aye. Um, okay, so uh, anyone want, what's the margin, Trish? 23 to one. Okay. Um, anyone want to co-sponsor the bill? I do. Okay, put your hand up. Uh, already be. Yep. Everybody who wants to do that, put your hand up in the Zoom and we will make a note of that. Uh, is that everybody? Okay, Ann Healy, Brooke Learman, Dana Stein, Jay Jalisi, DFH, Roxanne Prettyman, Linda Foley, Sarah Love, Regina Boyce, Vaughn Stewart. And read that back when you have a chance, please. I have Healy, Learman, Stein, Jalisi, Fraser Dago, Pretty, Pretty Man, Foley, Love, Boyce, and Stewart. Okay. Uh, sounds good. House, House Bill 250. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The subcommittee recommendation is favorable with amendments. This bill establishes the Private Well Safety Program and the Private Well Safety Fund administered by MDE to address and manage the contamination of private wells. The purpose of the special fund is to award grants for costs associated with water quality testing and remediation. The bill also establishes related reporting and outreach requirements as well as requirements for contracts for the sale of real property. Amendment number one is technical. Amendment number two alters definitions, alters the requirements for contracts for the sale of real property and makes related changes. Move the amendments, Mr. Chairman. Uh, okay, is there a second? Second. Okay, any discussion on the amendments? Okay, we'll proceed to a vote on the amendments. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the amendments carry. On the bill as amended, uh, is there a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion on the bill? Delegate Fraser Dalgo. Uh, Delegate Stewart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to, first of all, thank all the different parties that have worked with me over the interim on this bill. I'm sure everyone remembers, I know Delegate Boyce remembers the bill last year that I had on Wells that became extremely controversial 
on the floor and ended up being, I think, the last bill that the House passed last year. I want to make it clear to everyone before we vote that this is not that bill. There, This bill includes no requirements whatsoever on any person to test their well. It simply does three things. It sets up a fund so that if the governor funds this program, people can get subsidies to test and to remediate their well, but they don't have to. It's just money if they want to apply for it. Number two, it sets up a database from the, with the Maryland Department of, our Environment, of the Environment so that we can track where contaminated wells are. And then number three, um, when you purchase a home, if you're the home buyer, you have to, you have to do a, a well water safety test, but you can waive that requirement if you want to. So it is not a mandate. Um, and that's it. That's the bill. So there are no, there's no like landlord stuff or weird stuff like we had last year no requirements whatsoever, just basically potentially free money for many of our constituents who have private wells. So that's it. Thank you. Well, it's gratifying for you to admit that it was a weird bill last year. So, uh, <laughs> uh, get, uh, Charles Otto. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to compliment the sponsor on the lengths he went to improve this bill. And um, I'm all for more testing, but I'm going to be voting against it because uh, some of the reporting and the da public database that we create, I have some concerns about. I, I think the Department of Environment has is, that information internally, but um, I'm all for uh, opportunities for uh, education to people that have to maintain their own water source and, uh, and pay for it. Um, so uh, I don't want to increase the cost there either, but uh, I, I just want to explain why I'm going to be voting against it. But uh, I do appreciate the great lengths that you went to uh, uh, make the bill, and it might have some valuable information from it. Okay. Any further discussion on the bill before we vote? Uh, uh, yeah, Delegate Weivel. Ditto on uh, what Delegate Otto said, but uh, Delegate Stewart, I have a question. Could you define free money? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, yes, I can. Money that comes to you so that you can buy, in this case, money that is delivered to you that you can then put towards testing or remediating your well. And is this on Christmas Day by Santa Claus? It's it, it depends on how the counties implement it. You know, some counties <laughs> may want to do this through Santa. Some might want to make this around Easter time, but it's up to the county. We want to make sure the counties have flexibility okay. to implement the program how they wish. All right. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think that's it. Uh, we're um, uh, we're going to vote. I want to remind all the members of the committee you can only vote if your camera is on and we can see that it's you and not some, you know, vote bot. So, oh, there we go. OK, <laughs> um, I'll, let's try voice vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. No. No. So uh, Charles is opposed. Wyville is opposed. Neil Parrott is opposed. Silberte is opposed. Anybody else? Jacobs. Jacobs is opposed. Jacobs is opposed. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Um, what's what's the um, what is the vote tally? Um, I might need help with your uh, nays. I had Otto, Jacobs, Silberti, Parrot, and Clark against. And Weibel. And Weibel. So voting in favor. Uh, cornbread and the Democrats. <laughs> so I had 18 else. to 6. W what is that again? 18 to 6. Okay. Uh, anyone want to be a co-sponsor of this no longer weird bill? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have Sheila Ruth, um, Regina Boyce, Mary Lehman, Linda Foley, Jen Terraza, wait, and DFH. Hmm. Read that back, please. Sure. Uh, Ruth Boyce, Layman, Foley, Terraza, and Fraser Hidalgo. Okay, sounds good. All right, uh, House Bill five, uh, 250 passes. House Bill 263, Marvin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, House Bill 263 
received an unfavorable report from the subcommittee. And this bill authorizes a plaintiff to bring nuisance action for damages caused by rodent harborage against the property owner, unless the rodent harborage occurs on property zone for agricultural use. Now I have to admit, Mr. Chair, we did not reach out to the sponsor to uh, ask if the sponsor wanted to withdraw this bill. Uh, we just uh, with, we voted unfavorable within the subcommittee, Mr. Chair. Well, you didn't really need to add that little uh, thing, but okay. Um, all right, the motion's unfavorable. Is there a second? Second. Uh, I see that Delia Terraza had, oh, okay, never mind. Does anybody have any uh, debate or discussion on this unfavorable motion? All right, we'll proceed to a voice vote. All those in favor of the unfavorable motion signify by saying aye. 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 Um, those opposed? Okay, it's unanimous among those present. Uh, unfavorable. Uh, House Bill 303 is Delegate Stein's bill. D uh, Dana, is that your subcommittee also? Uh, no, no, that's that, fine. Uh, oh, no, okay. Go ahead, Ann. Uh, yeah. This, this is a bill we had before. It has um, a technical amendment that, that actually we need to do. It, we didn't have it for the subcommittee meeting, but I okay. uh, found out about it later. Uh, but I think Matt can explain the reason for that. But basically, it's the same bill that we did before with a few changes. Matt, can you explain the amendment? Sure. Um, there was some wording that was used in the bill and... Um, it was, it was intended to be in each instance, the same idea with this reference to a permit was meant to be construction permits. Uh, it's referred to as permit or work permit throughout the bill. This is just using one concise word since it is meant to be the same idea. There are also other amendments on the bill that the subcommittee considered, but I'll, I'll let Delegate Healy address those. Okay, well, let me just get them out. <laughs> Uh, right. Actually, I, I, why don't you explain the amendments, Matt, Matt because sure. I have to find my paperwork here. Thank sure, you. Sure, sure. So in addition to the, the one I just spoke about, uh, the subcommittee considered three amendments. The first would require the Department of Labor to adopt certain requirements applicable to additions, alterations, or repairs as stated in the International Swimming Pool and Spa Code. And I'll just note that this is language that was in the bill that passed out of the committee last year. Uh, was not in the bill as introduced, so the amendment places it back into the bill. Um, the second amendment corrected a drafting error in the bill as introduced with regard to a date, and the third amendment clarifies the application of this act with regard to swimming pools or spas built and in operation before a certain date. Okay, uh, Delegate Otto has his hand up. I, I, is this question on the amendments or on the bill itself? Well, probably more on the bill itself or who it impacts. And uh, well, why don't we why don't we just pass yeah. the amendments and then I'll call on you, okay, Charles? Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, is there a second for the amendments? Okay, we I see second. Ruth raised her hand. All those in favor of the amendments, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Uh, all aye. Uh, the ayes seem to have it. The ayes have it. The bills before us as amended. Is there a second? Second. Second. Delegate Otto. So this is impacting both the private home pools and, and maybe uh, common uh, uh, areas in a condominium complex or something. Right. Yes. yes. And this is in addition to the International Building Code. That it's similar to that but code. It's, but it's, it's, it's his own kind of code because it's about safety issues in, in the in the swimming pools. So if you have, a, and it's for new or substantially changed. Well, most pools take repairs from time to time. And uh, I'm, that's, I'll be voting no for it, but uh, on it. Enforce it. That's all right. It, Thank it's, you. It's, the idea is obviously to uh, protect, uh, especially children from drowning. Well, I, I believe we already have the fencing responsibilities and things like that, which I certainly am in favor of, and any responsible person would have them to start with. But uh, thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, any further discussion on the bill as amended? If not, we'll proceed to a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Jay, are you there? Uh, you. Yep. You voting aye? Am I? Yeah, you're voting aye. Okay. I'm, wait a minute, Mr. Chairman. Were you what? talking to me, Jay, or Jay Jalisi? Jay Jalisi, not oh, you, okay. Jay Jacobs. <laughs> Jay, uh, Jaleesi, are you voting aye? Give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Or... Oh, yes. Okay, he's voting yes. Okay, uh, so so Otto, uh, who's voting? No, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so oh. Otto and who else? Parrot, no. Jay Jacobs. Out. What? Is that no? Yes. <laughs> <It> is... <laughs> you want to vote no? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's not confusing. Okay, so we've got Otto, Jacobs, Parrot, Silberti, Wyvil. Anybody else voting no? Jerry Clark or Cornbread? Where, how are you voting? I guess they're voting yes. So because I haven't heard of no, I, I no. Jerry Clark is no. Cornbread, how say you? Where is Cornbread? Carl, I don't think he's. Uh, okay, he had a meeting at three, but um, oh, not okay. sure when he left, but we'll, uh, okay. we'll put his absent. God, this is so much easier in a committee room, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Um, yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Much. Well, so uh, give us the vote. Uh, a vote margin. Vote tally. I had seventeen to six. Okay. How many people absent? One. Just Anderton and yeah. Yeah, okay. Excuse. All right, anyone wanna be on this bill? Oh yeah. Um, put your hand up in the Zoom. Oh yeah, here we go. Ann Healy, Regina Boyce, Jay Jalisi, Sheila Ruth, Roxanne Prettyman, Anybody else? Mary Lehman. Thanks. Oh, Mary Lehman. Okay, if you could read that back for us. Sure. I have delegates Healy, Boyce, Jalisi, Lehman, Ruth, and Prettyman. Sounds good. Okay, let's go on to House Bill 615. Thank you, Mr. Chair. House Bill 615 received a, a favorable report from the subcommittee. Uh, and there are no amendments to the bill as proposed, uh, HB 615. Uh, the bill changes the dispute settlement mechanism under the Maryland Condominium Act and establishes a similar dispute settlement mechanism under the Maryland, under Maryland Homeless Association Act. Um, this bill is very, very similar uh, with except two, two small changes that was passed out of the House in 2021, uh, 100, 130 to zero, and it also passed uh, with uh, within the committee 22 to zero uh, last year with uh, without those uh, very small changes. And with that, Mr. Chair, I move favorable on House Bill 615. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the bill? Okay, yeah, well- you explain to me, oh, sorry. Do you want me to raise hand? Yeah, no, you, I, I'll recognize you. Go ahead, uh, Jaleesi. I just wanted to know what is this, um, what is the mechanism for dispute settlement now that if we pass the bill. Matthew? Um, so it depends. In With regard to the Condominium Act, it would uh, make the changes as listed in the fiscal note. Um, at, many of the changes look to be extending on uh, certain dates and times when notices have to be provided, as well as um, giving the, the option for a hearing rather than requiring outright a hearing. And then with regard to the homeowners associations, um, there isn't a standard for dispute settlement. So this would establish uh, a, a similar set of standards yeah. as consistent as possible with the um, Condominium Act. So those provisions that are used for the Condominium Act, it would apply those to the homeowners associations. And if I could expand upon that, uh, Delegate Jalisi, uh, prior to the bill, a hearing was mandatory and sometimes the uh, uh, the parties did not necessarily want to have a hearing, and it delayed the whole process. 
That's what this bill is correcting. So is there, a, is there a requirement for an HOA to have a certain number of homes uh, to be considered an HOA? I mean, I'm sure it's not one house, but is there, like, how do, how do you describe the HOA? HOA is described by the articles of incorporation, articles of, uh, in, 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 the, in the governing documents from the very, very beginning. There's no, in the governing documents that are established with the State Department of Assess and Taxation and recorded in land records, there are no specific number of units required for a co-op co condominium or HOA. So if, if there is to be an HOA, it has to be from the beginning. You can't just have 15 houses or 10 houses and then the county or the state can't come in and say that you have to have an HOA. Is that? Uh, I, 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 two, uh, two answers to that question. Number one, it's not relevant to this bill. And number two, the answer to the question is, the HOAs or the governing or the common ownership community, which we should be calling it, uh, must be established from the very beginning. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, actually, that causes me to have a question. Uh, Marvin, what if uh, a small community of, of people unanimously wanted to form an HOA? I can't imagine why they would, but if they did, would that be possible? Yes, it is. Uh, they would just do the same thing that the declarant would do at the very beginning of a project. They would put together the articles of organization and then uh, move forward with the uh, through the start, State Department of Assessment Taxation and form their HOA. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Any other questions or debate on the bill? If not, we'll proceed to a voice vote. All those in favor, turn on your cameras and signify by saying aye. 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 Yes. Yep, that's her. Uh, anybody opposed? Okay, I, I guess that's everybody except uh, Anderton, right? Trish? Correct. Okay, so that'll be 24 to zero. Okay. Um, 23 all right. to zero. 23, we have 25 members. Oh, right. Um, Melissa loves, yeah. M Melissa, right, okay. Uh, all right, 615 passes. Um, uh, House Bill 616. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. House Bill 616 passed out of the subcommittee favorable with amendments. Uh, and this bill, House Bill 16, uh, mirrors, uh, mirror, mirrors will be just passed 615. But this bill is specific to cooperatives. As we all know, there's a difference between condos and HOAs and cooperatives. HB 616 is relevant to cooperatives only because it's a different section of the law. Um, and uh, the bill, the, the amendments to this bill alter the, alter the dispute, me dispute settlement mechanism under the Cooperative Housing Cooperation Act and repeal the general prohibition against governing document, governing body of a cooperative housing corporation bringing action to evict a member solely based on a me member's failure to pay specific assessment. Because keep in mind, in a cooperative, don't own the unit, uh, you are um, a shareholder. Uh, and the third amendment, Mr. Chair, makes just small technical amendments and clarifying changes. Now, uh, in la last year, we had a similar bill that passed uh, our committee 22 to zero, uh, and it also passed the House floor 133 to zero. Mr. Chair, I move the amendments. Second. So, and there's a second. Any discussion on the amendments before we vote? Hearing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Was no, aye. the ayes seem to have it. The ayes have it. Amended, Mr. Chair. Is there a second? Second. I take it that these bills, what committee did they die in last year? <laughs> uh, I, ju judiciary, Mr. Chair. Oh, what a shock. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Any discussion on the bills before we, uh, this bill before we vote? Hearing none, we will proceed to a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, aye. Brooke, Brooke, are you there? There she is. She's voting yes, to, uh, I assume, right? Give us a thumbs up. Okay. Uh, anyone opposed? Okay. So that would be 23 to zip, right, uh, Trish? Yes. Okay. All righty then, uh, we've got four bills that have been withdrawn by sponsors, Del uh, House Bill 198, Ebersol 505, PGMC, 
687 and 782 by Delegate Chalisi. Is there, the motion is motion unfavorable, withdrawn by sponsor. Is there a sec, second? Board? Second. Okay, uh, any discussions before we proceed to vote on the unfavorable motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the unfavorable motion to withdraw and withdrawal of these bills signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Aye. Is someone opposed? No, okay. All right, that's it people. Um, have a great weekend. I won't. I'll be at work. So uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, have a great weekend. See you on whenever I see you, Tuesday, probably. Delegate hey, Layman has a question. Oh, Delegate Layman has a question. Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just real quickly, should we be expecting um, to have both hearings and votings on Fridays from now on? Yeah, actually, you know, it's a good thing you mentioned that this Friday, this Friday we're actually... Um, have we're going to have a long public hearing because we have one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, climate solution bills, and I expect that there will be a lot of people. I haven't made up uh, made up my mind as to whether or not um, we'll vote on Friday or Thursday. I'm going to have to look at the schedule and make a decision. There is one option though, and I, I want to throw this out to you. We, back in the old days, and and Ann Healy will remember this. There were times when we would actually stay in town and vote on Saturday mornings. Now, since we're doing this by Zoom, I wonder if that's something that you would entertain. What are your thoughts on this? I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Okay, well, okay. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, uh, I'll also talk it over with staff and I'll let you know what my decision is early next week. Uh, uh, and obviously, if you have any thoughts over the weekend, you want to call me, you all have my number, I believe. So and if you don't, you can ask Trish and she'll give it to you. So anywho, that's uh, yeah. So Friday is going to be a long public hearing day for us next week. So that's thank you. That's the situation. Do, do yeah. you, Thanks. Mr. Jim, do you know if we're going to have session next Friday? I don't think we are. No, three days next three days. week. Yeah, it's Monday, Tuesday, when uh, uh, it's uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week. Okay, so Friday we could start at eleven o'clock again, I assume. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna start at eleven o'clock again. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> it was a four and a half hour. Well, it was a four and a half hour public hearing in the Senate, but the Senate bill was like we have four bills uh, on this subject matter, and he had one. So maybe who knows? Maybe it'll only be three and a half hours. You never know. <laughs> okay. Never know. Wait a minute. We're... Oh, wait a minute. We are on the floor on Friday. Are we? Yeah, that's oh. Trish just ran in and told me that. Okay, well, I'll, I'll get back to you all early next week to let you know how I think we should proceed with all of this. So, okay. Okay. Well, anyway, have rest up. You might need it. See you guys. Bye.